So um, you guys are feeling okay with coterminal angles? Yeah? Do we need to go over any more? How to do any more of them? Or are you guys okay? Um, but let's, you know, let's go through and um, see. If, <laughs> let's see if we can draw some of these angles, right? So first we're going to draw an angle of negative 30 degrees. And here, that is the initial point. Uh, the initial side, negative 30 goes downwards 30 degrees, okay? And you have to put the arrow like that and here. So when you're graphing in degrees, each corner is 90 degrees, right? So, um, you know, 90, 180, 270, and so on, okay? So let's try to graph, okay, the positive coterminal angle to this. Okay, that's... 330. Let's try to graph an angle of 330. So I start from here and now I'm going to go clockwise. Uh, I'm sorry, counterclockwise. So 90, 180, 270. Now if I go all the way, it'll be 360, right? So I don't go all the way. I just go up to here, 330. And do you see how they start and end in the same place? But they kind of take, you know, different ways about it, right? That's the idea behind coterminal angles. So in the next one, let's try to see if we can graph 3 pi over 4. Okay? Um, so 3 pi over 4. Now, um, the way that works is um, 3 pi over 4 is another way of saying 3 quarters of a pi. So let's see how that looks. Um, so here, okay, so 3 pi over 4, that's 3 fourths of a pi. So if I start here, remember how before I said each corner was 90 degrees? Well, in radian, each corner is half a pi. So basically, it's half a pi, half a pi, half a pi, half a pi. Together, that makes 2 pi, okay? So now... If I start from here, and if I have to draw 3 quarters of a pi, this is half a pi. Is 3 quarters greater than or less than half? Greater than. Greater than. So I have to go over on this side. Now is it greater than or less than 1 pi? Less than. So it's going to be in this quadrant here. Okay, and I put the arrow so I know which direction I went. Okay? All right, and you guys know how to find the coterminal angles to these, right? Add 2 pi minus 2 pi. Okay, so then let's move on to arc length. <coughs> um, so arc length, we actually talked about it last time when we talked about the circle. Do you guys remember the circle that we talked about? So when you're walking around the you know, circumference of the circle, the distance that you cover, the, those you know, portions of the circle, those are called arc length, okay? So here... If I take, you know, like one portion of the outside of a circle, that's arc length. And the symbol for that is S. I don't know why it's S. I guess A and L were taken or something, but the symbol for it is S. Okay. To find that distance, S, the formula is S equals R theta. Short formula that you have to memorize, S equals R theta. But the big thing is theta has to be in radian, okay? Meaning in terms of pi, not in degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at the first um, example here. It says to find the length of the intercepted arc. That's a mouthful, but it just means S. So we need to find S. We're given a central angle measure and a radius. So formula is s equals r theta so s equals what r am i given here two and the theta is the angle and i'm given the angle as two pi over three now is that in terms of pi it is it's that means it's in radians so i can use it as it is so two pi over three okay now at this point, go ahead and take out your calculators. You're going to type in this 
as is into the calculator. So we're going to do 2 times 2 pi. Do you guys know where the pi button is? It's on the left-hand side all the way at the bottom. Do you see that on my screen? It's highlighted in red. And when you do that, you have this cute little window that opens. You choose the pi, divide it by 3, and you should all get 4.18 blah, 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 blah. Yes? Everybody get that? Okay, so the question is telling us, or the directions are telling us to round to the nearest tenth. S is 4.2. Okay? All right, next. Next, I have an angle of 135 degrees. That is a problem because it's not in radian. It's not in the terms of pi. So I take the 135, and how do I convert to radian? Does pi go on top? Pi over 180. And so now, so this is theta. So now look at what happens. I just rewrite this as 135 pi over 180. Yeah. Why do we have to do that 135? Because in the formula here, we said that theta had to be in radian. Okay? 135 is in degrees. What does it mean? It means it has to be in terms of pi, like pi over 6, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 5, whatever. Okay? So, like this one, 135 pi over 180. Okay. So, just in terms of pi. So, you take the degree measure, and then you have to convert it to radian times pi over 180. Okay? So, S is R theta. S is, what's the radius here? 0.5 and then theta is 135 pi over 180 okay so this is going to be 0 0.5 times 135 times pi all over 180, okay? So S is 1.18, which is 1.2. Now, in this problem, we're given units. R is in feet, so since S is a distance, it'll also be in feet, okay? Yeah. So when you have a central angle like we did before, and you know, you've got like this intercepted arc, that creates a region that we call a sector. So basically if you had like, you know, a pizza and you cut out a slice, the, the whole slice of pizza is a sector of a circle, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to find the area of a sector like this. And it has another formula, which is area is half r squared theta, but again, theta has to be in radian, okay? So, take a look here. We've got theta is 3 pi over 4, r is 1.5 feet, and we need to find the area. So, a is half r squared theta. So, is theta here the angle? Is it in the right form for us to use? Is it in radian? It's in terms of pi, so yes, it's in radian. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Okay, so we say area is half, what's the radius? 1.5 squared, and then what's the theta? 3 pi over 4. So now this we have to put in the calculator, so look at how I do it. It's a half, right? I like to use 0.5 because it's easier for me to put into the calculator, times 1.5 squared, and so on. Yeah? Will we get uh, this formula? No, you have to know it. 3 pi over 4. Okay, you should all get 2.65 and so on. So, area is 2.7, and now look. The units, right, it's R as in feet, but we squared it, so it will be feet 
squared. Okay? All right, take a look at the next one. We're going to do a little poll. Theta is in 50 degrees. Is it in a, the correct form for us to use? Who says yes? Who says no? No. So let's put it in a better form. 50 times pi over 180. And look, we can just get rid of the zeros. So it's 5 pi over 18. So area is half r squared theta, half 6 squared. Okay. And then, um, so go ahead and plug that into the calculator and see what you all get. Yeah, so this is 15.7. What are the units? Feet squared, because we're squaring the radius. Okay, last but not least, the area of a sector and the measure of the central theta, uh, the central angle are given. We need to find the length of the radius. Okay, so we need to find R now. You're given area, you're given theta. So you have to use the formula that connects area to radius. Well, that's this one that we've been using. Okay? All right, let's plug in what we have. We have area, it's 190, equals half r squared, that's what we need to find. And then what's the theta? 5 pi over 3. Well, right, but the formula is a equals half r squared theta, and a is, it, a is just a, so it's just 190, okay? So now I need to solve for r. First, let me get rid of the 5 pi over 3. I multiply by 3 over 5 pi, 3 over 5 pi. Okay, so this goes away. So we want to solve for r, right? This is what we want to solve for. We want to get that one alone. So how is, why is this one different from the last one? Because the last one, we were looking for a. Uh, this time we're given a, we need r, okay? So what do we have now? 3 times 190. I'm going to show you guys how to put it all in the calculator in one step. So all this equals one half r squared. So how do I get rid of the one half? Multiply everything by two. So now I have two times three times 190 over five pi equals r squared. You don't have to multiply by No, because it's two over one. So now, let's plug that into the calculator, and I get 2 times 3 times 190 all over 5 pi. And you know, I like to put the 5 pi in parentheses because you never know how the calculator will, will interpret it. That's what we have, right? Get the square root of the yeah, in a minute. So here's what we have to do. So r squared is you know, 72.57465, blah, blah, blah. Now, look at what I want you all to do. You take a square root, right, to find R. But when you go in your calculator, I want you to do the square root of, and don't type in any numbers. I want you to take the square root of the last answer that the computer, the calculator gave you. So I want you to do control answer. That's the button to the left of the enter. What that does is it takes the last answer and it puts the whole thing in there so there is no rounding error. Enter. Okay, so you get 8.5 for the answer. Now, let me show you another way to do it. You know, okay, so this is what we had before, right? You pressed enter and that was it. Now you had to take a square root of that, right? Here's another way to do it. It's kind of cool with the calculator. Take a square root, right? Press the up button. You see how it highlights that? Press enter, and then it just enters that thing into the um, 
square root and you'll get the same answer. Okay, um, oops, that's not what I meant. Um, what are the units for this one? What is this? What, what have we found? Radius. So it's just in feet. If it was area, it would have been feet square. But since it's just radius, it's just feet. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. And, um, you know, you have homework from the book for next time. But, um, so we'll stop.